Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen. And to everybody who's subscribed to the channel already, thank you so much. I'm loving seeing the numbers going up, and I really appreciate it. If you haven't had a chance to do that already, please do that today. Hit that like and subscribe, especially after the video, if you find it helpful. So today we're going to look at Unit 4.1, Attribution Theory and Person Perception. We're going to look at the key terms today, the definitions and real life examples. If you want a little bit more information about the essential knowledge you need to know for this section of Unit 4, then you'll have to go to the other videos where I'll go through each of the CED questions. There were three for this section, and I'll talk about the essential knowledge and everything you need to know for this part of unit four. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so here we go. So there's a whole list of key terms that goes with 4.1, which makes sense because there are three CD questions. So you know that this unit has a lot of information that you need to know. So let's go through each one. I'll give you a definition and an example. And at the end, I'm just going to put the words on the screen so you can pause and then you can see if you know, if you can explain each of these words, because that's really important for exam day to be able to apply the knowledge to the MCQs or to an FRQ. Okay, here we go. Let's start with attribution theory. So explains how people interpret the causes of behavior and mental processes, attributing them to either internal, dispositional, or external, situational factors. So let's break those down into dispositional and situational. So dispositional attribution, she succeeded because she's smart and hardworking. Situational attribution, he failed because the test was unfair. And you see the difference here, right? Okay, explanatory style, a habitual way of explaining events in life which can be optimistic, positive, or pessimistic, negative. Let's look at both again. Optimistic style, I failed the test because I was tired, but I'll do better next time. Pessimistic style, I failed the test because I'm just not smart enough. That's your two differences. Actor observer bias. This is the tendency to attribute our own behavior to situational factors, but others' behaviors to dispositional factors. I was late because of traffic, but she's late because she's irresponsible. Fundamental attribution error. This is the tendency to overestimate dispositional factors and underestimate situational factors when explaining others' behavior. He's unemployed because he's lazy, not because there's a recession. Self-serving bias, the tendency to attribute personal successes to internal factors and failures to external factors. I aced the test because I'm brilliant, but I failed the project because the teacher didn't explain it very well. Okay, so now let's look at lotus of control. As you can see, there's no example here, and I'm going to explain why in a minute. So let's look at the definition. A belief about whether outcomes in life are determined by internal or external factors. So what we're going to do in the next slides is I'm going to give you the definition and example of internal locus of control and external locus of control. So let's go to internal locus of control. So this is the belief that one's actions determine outcomes. I got the promotion because I worked hard. Okay, that's the example. External locus of control is belief that outcomes are due to external forces like luck or fate. I didn't get the promotion because my boss is biased. So it's outside, it's external, right? Here, we're going to look at the mere exposure effect. People tend to develop a preference for things they are repeatedly exposed to over time. So for example, hearing a song repeatedly on the radio and eventually liking it more. Self-fulfilling self prophecy. When a person's beliefs or expectations lead them to act in ways that make those beliefs come true. A teacher believes a student is gifted and gives them more attention, leading to the stu student to excel and confirm the belief. Social comparison. Evaluating oneself by comparing to others, which can be upward to those who perceived as better or downward to those perceived as worse. So let's look at upward. Admiring a peer's academic success and striving to improve, or downward, feeling better about one's own job performance compared to a struggling coworker. Relative deprivation, feeling deprived or disadvantaged when comparing oneself to others who seem to have more. A person who feels unhappy with their income after learning a friend earns more at their job. Okay, now let's have a look at each word separate and individually and see if you can pause and just say the definition and maybe an example to go with it just to test your knowledge or even just to see if you've got them all written down on your cards or in your notes, okay? Here we go. Attribution theory. Explanatory style. Actor observer bias. Fundamental attribution error. Self-serving bias. Locus of control. Internal locus of control. 
external locus of control. Mere exposure effect. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Social comparison. Relative deprivation. Okay, and those are the key terms for 4.1 attribution theory and person perception. So hopefully you found those helpful. You've got them on your flashcards or in your note cards or whatever you want to do with them, whatever works for you best to learn them so that you can apply them to a unit test or on test day um, in May, which uh, is really the, the goal, right? Isn't it? So whatever works best for you. So if you really like the video, please hit that like button for me and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I love seeing the numbers go up and I really appreciate it. And we're going to go on to 4.2 next. Until next next time. Thanks.